my homegirl, she called me at like 12, 1 o'clock at night. And there are a few people I answered the phone for that time of night. And I saw her name popped. I'm like, yo, you good? She's like, yeah, I'm calling check and check and see, make sure you good. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm with my homeboys. She goes, have you seen the comments? I'm like, what comments? What are you talking about? She said, yo, call me when you leave. About two, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, I'll leave. What's up? She said, yes. Yeah. I, I said, yeah, I see. Like, Who's, who page is this? She said, yeah, it's a very popular page. Like, yo, look at the comments. Are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. Most negative comments I've ever received in my life, and I'm nothing of it bothered me. Mm -hmm. I was so unbothered. It went viral again on another page. Mm -hmm. Same type of comments. Got shared by Eva Longoria, the um, America's Next Top Model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the joint's out there going nuts. Like, the follower count went up. Um, DMs went went up. Um, of people that yo, thank you so much, man. You really encouraged me. You really helped me. Guys sending me videos of them with their shirts off. Hmm. Guys sending me DMs, you know, saying, man, just thank you. Just like for what you're doing, this body positivity thing has really helped me out. Mm -hmm. I'm not there yet. But what you're doing is helping me. So I'm realizing I got to even go even further in my vulnerability. Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. Here you will learn how to start, launch, and monetize your podcast. In addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast industry. Are you ready? First and foremost, if you're out there, you're a speaker, you're a coach, you're a consultant, I want to just give you this quick, this quick invite. All right. I want to invite you to an upcoming training that I have, and it's geared towards my speakers and my coaches, my consultants as well. And I want to show you how to ultimately take your voice and expand your reach as well as your revenue. I'm going to break all this down in the training, even if you don't have a lot of followers. All right. So you can go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. I'm going to have the link just below in the show notes, and I'll see you in the training now back to the episode what does experience experiencing freedom feel like it feels like you can do anything in the world without judgment or embarrassment living in your brain there's nothing like for me embarrassment does not exist in my world there's nothing you can do to embarrass me to me embarrassment does shouldn't even exist because we all trip we mm. all fall we all may sneeze and fart we all may you know and I'm going to say graphic stuff because those are the things that people are always embarrassed about. If I fall in front of a thousand people, I'm not the first person that's fell in front of a thousand people. Mm -hmm. You know, if I share my story of homosexuality, I'm not the first guy. If I share my story of, you know, living life on a DL, I'm not the first guy. I'm even the first guy publicly speaking about it, like as often as I do. But I'm not the only one. And my therapist helped me realize that I'm not the only one in anything that I experience in life. And from there, it's like, you know, the repetition of going to therapy, the repetition of no longer being embarrassed and saying, you know, that's, that's nothing to be embarrassed about. Like Donnie on the podcast last episode, she's like, there's nothing you can do to embarrass Joe. Mm -hmm. For her to say that, that shows so much growth in me. There's nothing you can do to embarrass me. I walk around my shirt off, my minis, my titties all, all the way out. Did a video <laughs> <laughs> two days ago. Like, there's nothing you can do to embarrass me because I'm not ashamed of anything anymore. Okay, wait, I'm 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 going here because you went here, but I, there's, there's there's something else I want to I want to I want to definitely hop to. But talk about the story at at, at the Midis. How did this come about? What what is this? Well, explain so, explain what what a Midi yeah, so, is. So the Midi is these things right here, man breast. <laughs> um, somebody actually gave me the name Midi. I said I'm running with that joint because it was dope. But I was at the pool one day just getting some exercise in, and when I go like when I, when I swim, I like to be. We good? Okay. When I swim, um, I like to be as free as possible. I like anything just like restraining me. So like, so I swim, swim my shirt off. So I'm in LA Fitness. I'm swimming. I'm like, you know what? I'm about to do a little motivational video real quick for any of my plus size guys. And that was all I wanted to be. A quick little motivational video. Next thing I know, later on that day, that joint went viral. Hmm. On two platforms. And I was like, this is nuts. I didn't mean for it to go viral. I was just trying to motivate somebody else, just like feel, to feel comfortable in your skin the way I do. Most definitely. And it became a thing where the comments were like good and the comments were bad. And my homegirl, she called me at like 12, 1 o'clock at night. And there are a few people I answered the phone for that time of night. And I saw her name popped. I'm like, yo, you good? She's like, yeah, I'm calling check and see, make sure you good. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm with my homeboys. She goes, have you seen the comments? I'm like, what comments? What are you talking about? She said, yo, call me when you leave. About two, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, I'll leave. What's up? She said, yes. I said, yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. Like, Who's, who page is this? She said, yeah, it's a very popular page. Like, yo, look at the comments. Are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. 
most negative comments I've ever received in my life, and I'm nothing of it bothered me. Mm -hmm. I was so unbothered. It went viral again on another page. Mm -hmm. Same type of comments. Got shared by Eva Longoria, the um, America's Next Top Model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the joint's out there going nuts. Like the follower count went up, um, DMs went went up. Um, of people that yo, thank you so much, man. You really encouraged me. You really helped me. Guys sending me videos of them with their shirts off. Hmm. Guys sending me DMs, you know, saying, man, just thank you, just like for what you're doing. This body positivity thing is really helping me out. Mm -hmm. I'm not there yet, but what you're doing is helping me. So I'm realizing I got to even go even further in my vulnerability. Wow. Wow. Man, so he hearing, hearing that, it, j it just brings up the thought, because I know, I know you've been in groups of people before and, and, and been in spaces and have had some intimate conversations. And it's one of those things to where you realize that the conversation will only go as deep as the first person who shares. Right. Right? So, like, if, you know, we, we start having a conversation, somebody's like, oh, hey, how's... The Falcons, how's, you know, the Cowboys? Yeah. Then the conversation stays there. But when, you know, like if, if, if you open up and then you share first, then we go deep, then other people will begin to share that and, you know, begin, begin to share those things. So mm -hmm. I, I can really appreciate that. But let, let's, let, let's, let's walk it back a little bit more. Let's walk okay. it back a little bit more. All right. You talked about therapy. Was it you going into therapy willing or was it you going in? What, what's the feeling that you had before your first your first uh, exchange with therapy or your first opportunity with therapy? therapy? So everything has always been by accident. Hmm. I accidentally went to a therapist. But it, I actually signed up for therapy. So I was working at a group home, mm -hmm. and part of the job was to take the kids to therapy every Tuesday. Wow. And I'm sitting in these sessions watching these kids, like, get all this stuff off their chest because like, we have similar stories and backgrounds. And I'm like, dang, like, that's so dope. Like, that y'all get the opportunity to really just spew out all the stuff that y'all have gone through. Somebody's there to help guide you through it, give you helpful tips and homework and stuff that you need to do to actually really get better. So I'm like, after the kids walk in, I'm like, yo, can I get one of these sessions? My first time in therapy at all, first time. She said, yeah, sign up with um, my, uh, my front desk associate, you know, we'll get you on the calendar. I'm like, bet, come in the session. I mean, I want the full experience. I'm laid out on the couch, shoes off. <laughs> like, All right, Doc, let's do this. <laughs> and um, I tell her what's going on, and her response was just like, some people say that her response was like, she kind of like, she didn't really put much emphasis into what I was experiencing, but for me, it helped me. It helped me. Mm. I said, yo, I told everything I just told you about my life. I molested at 12, lived a whole life of homosexuality for a short period of time. I told her all that stuff. She was like, that's it? And I was like, yeah. She was like, oh, man, I thought you had some real like, life change, like you better kill yourself. I was like, oh, no, nah, I ain't never thought about suicide. That ain't, that ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, oh, man, like, you're not the only person that experienced like that. And then she shared a personal story of hers, and I was like, dang, like, that is it. Like, it's not that bad. Um, it's really not that bad of what I did and what I, in the life I experienced. Life isn't that bad, but we walk around carrying this weight. Like, life is that bad. We can be walking around free. Mm, talk to us, Joe. And from that day... Now, of course, you know, it still takes time to build up because, like, in the, the relationships and stuff like that, you don't want to tarnish because of what you've gone through. But she's like, all right, your homework, your first uh, homework assignment is to text five people and tell them everything you just told me. I'm like, what? Oh, wow. And I just so happened to be a group chat with five people. I think everything oh. is just weird how everything has been oh, playing out in my life. Man. Wow. And um, so I'm like, five of my closest friends from college, I'm like, yeah, I'm in therapy right now. And they're like, oh, man, thank you. I'm like, I'm slow walking this thing. <laughs> I'm in therapy right now, y'all. Oh, good for you. That's good, man. I'm so happy for you. I got something to tell y'all. All right, what is it? Um, da 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 da. So, I know y'all told y'all about me being molested before, but there's more to that. You know, I also lived life homosexuality before, and I just wanted to tell y'all because my therapist told me I should tell somebody, and y'all, five of my closest friends that is happy to be talking to right now. And they're like, oh, wow. I'm thankful that you shared that with us. I really appreciate that you shared it with us. I love you. I mean, I had an idea. That's, that's what you, you know, you probably experienced that before. I still love you, though. And like, dang, like, this is the response I'm getting? I'm thinking, like, yo, I'm about to lose some friends. Uh, they ain't gonna talk to me no more. But I realized that my character carried me along the way. Because I was never a guy who was bashing homosexuals. Never a guy who was scared to be around homosexuals. It was like, yo, like, everybody's my friend. And I treat everybody that way because I want to be welcomed that same exact way. Mm. 
So as I tell people, I tell my best friend next, and she had like we had like a moment because like me and my best friend like we're like soul friends, like we're connected at the hip, mm-hmm. and um. We, uh, yeah, we, you ain't gonna need some drinks for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Pull me up. <laughs> it's like great, 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 great. I flew out to Vegas just to tell her this. Like this is how important. Oh, wow. it, was, it was that important to me. That's my, this is my That's best real. friend. Like That's real. we share everything. And um, I told her, same response. I still love you. I'm so glad you told me. I hate that you waited so long to tell me. Wow. And you know, she, it was like she was like, yo, like now I need to look at myself and see like why don't you feel comfortable enough to share things like this with me. Mm. So I'm like, dang, like, I didn't look at it that way either. And now that, you know, fast forward, it's just, I share this story publicly like I do right now on my platform and platforms like this to, to help other brothers and other sisters who are experiencing what I've experienced and who are hiding behind whatever it is that you've gone through, that it's okay. That you're not the only person. Share your story. Mm. Free somebody else up. Live your life vulnerable i tell people right now vulnerability is a new sexy it's not about your body what your body look like it's not about you know your parents your eyes your hair your vulnerability is what makes you sexy your vulnerability is what opens you up to so many other people like you know what connects people to me and that's what's drawn people so close to me is my vulnerability my willingness to listen to somebody my willingness not to judge anybody my willingness to really help you Give you if it's like a quick nugget or a little small gem that I can drop to you, like yo, let's do this. Or if I'm te- if you're on my text list and I'm texting you every day, affirmations or how to heal yourself, stuff like that. Like I'm giving all this away because this is all the stuff I wanted when I was a kid. All the stuff I wanted when I was dealing and doing a life, dabbling and dabbling in life as I was living. All that stuff I wanted, so I give that stuff away freely to help people become free. Man, that's real. That's. Man, you said you said you said you said you said you said a lot, but one one thing I really took away was what you said about your friend and how she how she said I need to look at me and see what it is about me that made you not comfortable enough to tell me, which is strong because she's coming from a place of ownership. Yeah, and I'm like hearing that I'm like blew me away. Wow, blew me away, and my best friend is like my accountability partner when it comes to me just growing as a man because that whole ownership thing Mm -hmm. she's always like okay how are we gonna own this Mm -hmm. how are we gonna own like i tell you this happened today joy okay how are we gonna own this you know she don't say it like that but that's pretty much that's pretty much Mm -hmm. the response like how are we gonna own it own up to this how are we gonna look at ourselves and say how can we do better man how are we not gonna point the finger today Oh my goodness. And that's the reason why like that's the reason why we're locked in as friends because she holds me accountable to my actions and who I am. Dang. That's deep, Joe. That's that's deep. That's deep. And one thing I just want to I want to I want to compliment you on because when we were talking earlier before off camera and even now and this is why I said that you've, you've mastered vulnerability. And I'm saying that because I know for you the work is not done. I know for you the work continues. I know it's still a daily intentional effort. Mm-hmm. But you be so locked in, bro. Like when we was talking, like you were so locked in with me. And, <laughs> and it's, but, it, and, but I'm, I'm saying that because think about how often if you go talk to somebody or make connect with somebody, whatever, hey, like, hey, yeah, how you doing? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I got you. I'm listening, da, da, da. I'm going to do this, though. Mm-hmm. But you just like, Ksh. Have you have you always been like that person to where like if you know you're connecting with somebody or you're rocking with somebody like you're just giving yourself to the conversation at that time? Yes and no. It depends on the conversation. It depends on the person. It depends on where we're going with this conversation. Huh. So I've gotten better at it. I would say I'm okay. still working on at it because there's times where if we're not together we're on the phone and like say if it's like we're having this conversation over the phone. <laughs> I'm on probably gonna be on Twitter, Instagram. If you're not, we're not engaged. But again, my best friend holds me accountable. I was on the phone one day with her one day, and she's like, "What are you doing?" I said, "Nothing." And she knew I was doing something because I was like not engaged. <laughs> and um, she's like, "You're distracted," and just hung up on me. Wow. And I was like, extreme accountability. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and I called her back. She didn't pick up. <laughs> oh, called back again. She didn't pick up. Petty and accountability. Was, oh, for all, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, dang, okay, how can I own this? 
So mm. now when you call me, my phone is on speaker and I, or my, I put my phone down away and I walk on headsets in or I just make sure that I'm being very attentive to you. Mm. So this is like years ago and I, every now and again it pops up again. Like, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm human. But it's just, I learned the fact of being attentive to people because I want the same attentiveness um, from other people. So it's like, Fair you know, enough. when people are talking to me, like when we were having a conversation earlier, I was locked in because you were telling me, you were sharing something with me that you, one, wanted my opinion of, or two, needed a response to, or three, it's just like, you know what, we're humans, we need to be connected with each other somehow, some way, and these phones are distractions, life is just a distraction, and even if it's a five-minute conversation or a two-minute mm -hmm. conversation, I'm locked in with you for that moment. Most definitely. And it's like, it's not fair for somebody to come to you and talk to you and they're not locked in or then hear a word you said and then you follow up with conversation the next day and they're like, dang, like, well, remind me again what you said. There's no reason why we should have to remind somebody of what we said if we were, should have been locked in the first day, the first time. Indeed. Indeed. Spe speaking of being locked in, so you have a podcast. Oh, for sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. What? Well, what? Well, well, talk, talk to us. Yeah, so talk right to now, about the podcast. If, you, if you research the podcast now, it's called Living Buster Podcast, but... um. I'm changing the name. Actually, you're probably this is the first time it's probably gonna hear it. It's, now it's called Vulnerability. Um, no crap. Vulnerable Moments with Jovan J. Palmer, and it's me sharing more vulnerable moments, and also you hearing stories of other people who have gotten vulnerable as well with their lives on sharing stuff. Like everyone who comes to my podcast, I always hear this one line: "Man, this is the first time I ever shared this." Wow. Every time, every episode, I get a first time something from somebody. Mm -hmm. And okay, I'm doing something. I know I'm doing something right. So I'm like, I'll, I'm changing the name to of it because I wanted to speak to what the podcast is about. You know, you hear the word blessed, of course, it's always going to be associated with church, you know, Christianity and stuff like that, or whichever you subscribe to. And I'm not saying, you know, that's not what I describe, subscribe to, but I wanted to open it up to more than just somebody who hears that word and think mm -hmm. one thing. Like I want a niche on a podcast to be niched down so when you hear it, you know exactly what's, what you're going to get. That's it. So, um, we sh pretty much people come on, they share their most vulnerable moments of life. Sheesh. You know, like I, I, my first episode, Brandon, um, shout out to Brandon um, Dixon, Brandon shot me. He interviewed me and I shared my entire life. Man. From A to Z. And that's what people come on, they share their entire lives of, you know, because like for, my homeboy Mitt was like, man, I'm, I'm, I want to be in here, man, because I want to share something other, other than business. I'm so tired of talking about business and real estate. And we got into mm -hmm. it, man. And he came on the podcast to get some help, really. Mm. He wanted to know, like, you know, what's the reason why I'm always, always need to be in a relationship? And through conversation, me being locked in, I'm like, oh, it's easy. You got mommy issues. Mm. So I helped him help that and also helped him with some situation he got with his wife, you know, that he's trying to figure out as far as, like, you know, because she wants him to get into therapy. It was on the podcast. So it's nothing I'm telling you, you know, somebody's business. It's on, on, on the episode. Uh, she wants him to get into therapy. And he's, he's, he's considering it, you know. And that was, like, my my podcast is a space to help people consider things they never considered before, to open up about things they never opened up about before, and to really like reconsider how they look at their lives and how they look at themselves. Wow, Joe, that's so deep. That's so, and, 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 and I, I really say that because we know culturally in our community and community communities of color. Mm -hmm. I just say communities yeah, of color yeah, for sure. There is us, so we'll just say there's the house, mm -hmm. right? What happens in the house stays in the yeah, house. Yeah, I hate that line. And then over there is therapy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't make the journey. But one thing I can appreciate about your podcast and the work that you're doing is you're creating a bridge. Yeah. Because a lot of us may or may not be comfortable just yet talking to somebody that may look like us, somebody mm -hmm. that may not about our deepest, darkest secrets. But, you know, with... With Joe and Joe, Joe got the tats, and you know Joe got the beard, got got the moisturized beard and everything <laughs> like that. But you, but it's you make it more palatable for the conversation because one on your first episode you've gone first, mm -hmm. right? So so normalizing that and creating that space because man, there, a, a lot of us just don't don't rock with therapy. No, and I get it. I mean, I understand why we don't want to rock with therapy because we haven't mm. been taught to rock with therapy. You think about it, like, we've always been told, like you said, what happens in this house stays in this house. And if you think about a house, it's a four-sided square or mm -hmm. rectangle, however big your house is, whatever you live in. Mm -hmm. And you think about your actual human body. You get the front, the back, your left side, your right side. Oh. Same as that thing. What happens in this house, what happens inside of me stays inside of me. Mm. So it's like that's embedded in our brains. 
what happens in his house stays in his house. Our houses, our bodies are temples. Mm. So what happens in his house stays in his house. And what's going on within us is stay, like whatever happens is we're, in, we're pretty much trained mm -hmm. to keep these things inside of us. So I teach you people how to share these moments, how to open your mouth, how to, you know, spew out what you've been holding, what you, because you got to say, we all want to tell what happened to us. That's true. We all want to get these things out of us. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we don't. Because in the back of our subconscious is telling us what happens in this house stays in this house. Uh. We don't share. We don't. This isn't what we do in our house. We don't share this. We don't do this. We don't do that. We don't. This is what we don't do. No. This is what we do now. Mm. We share our vulnerable moments. We share our truths. We share all the things that's happened to us. You want to know why? Because there's somebody who wants to love you, but they can't love you because you don't want to share that one thing that's happened in your life. And that's why I share like all my moments. Yeah. There's nothing you can't ask me that I won't tell you. There's nothing that's off limits. That's good. You ask me, like, I always ask people at the beginning of my podcast, anything off limits? No. Oh, we going all the way in then. Mm. Man. And and, and 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 it's so it's so it's so powerful to hear you say that, bro, because before I got married, when I was dating my wife, like we went to I remember she took me to a spot uh, for sushi for my birthday. And you know we're sitting down, and I was like, "Something I gotta tell you." And then I, you know, I just just broke down, started telling her, like, you know, the notorious, you know, the notorious list, mm -hmm. right? So I'm telling her, I'm like, "Hey, there's this, there's that, da 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 da." And then she was like, "I still love you, bro." The tear just shed, just shed it out of my eye, and uh -huh. we can just we can stay with the analogy of the house. Yeah. And it was like I had the opportunity to release something out the windows, and I felt so much better, man. Yeah. I, because I, I, I allowed her the opportunity to see all of me and then to have all of me. It's, it's just like what we do with people. We want to inform people of all the information and then let them make the best decision Absolutely. for them. Absolutely. And that's what I do when I date and I encourage other men. Yo, if you live the life just like I lived on a DL or homosexuality, whatever it may be, that second date, you need to open your mouth about what you experience mm -hmm. because you don't want one. I know for a fact I'm a very charming guy. I'm a very attentive guy. You know, I know I have very good. I know all these things about myself. And it's not even like <laughs> it's not even like to like gas me up. No, nah, truth I, is truth. It's just the truth of who I am. Yeah. And I know I have to say something before feelings get caught. Mm. And then you got to make a very heartfelt decision versus mm. a mental decision. So second date, I'm either texting you this or I'm telling you on the phone. Like, this is the life I live. And it's not like I'm not hiding it because you can Google my name and find it. There's an article about it. There's a podcast episode about it. There's clips about it on my page. I'm not hiding anything from you. Mm. So I want you to think, oh, man, why did you hit this from me? No, I didn't. This one girl today, she was like, I told her, she was like, I already knew. I said, how'd you know? And she said, oh, I, I did my research. Bet. Let's ride uh, this thing on out. That's fair enough, yeah. I told one girl I was talking to her um, about a few months ago. You know, like, what do you, I was like, what do you know about me? She said, I mean, I don't know, you, you're from Syracuse, New York, you know, you're Javon, you're a very handsome guy, very charismatic, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, you know, this one other thing you need to know. And she was like, I told her, you know, she said, oh, I knew that too. I just want uh -huh. you to tell me. Oh, oh okay. Oh. All right. Dang. So like I said, my character has gone before me. Mm. Like, I've always been a stand-up guy. You know, I've always been a great person. You know, I'm still, I still have areas I need to work on, of course, but... For the most part, I've been a great guy to people where they are willing to accept me for who I am. Hmm. And it's to anybody, like, yo, just be a great person to the best of your ability. Be, just be a great person. Be a great human. You know, don't be the human that, you know, doesn't have a backbone, of course. Yeah, Cause yeah. that was me once upon a time. I didn't have a backbone. Huh. I got one girl, she put a back, backbone off my back. <laughs> I mean, all the way, like, she chewed me out one day. And I'm like, you think, well, who are you? Who do you think you are? But it was like, that was the empowerment that I needed, that I was missing mm. for myself. Like, I thought I was doing well, and she saw something inside of me. Like, you run into, we all run into people for various reasons in our parts of our lives. Mm -hmm. And you think you're doing so well in life. You think, oh, man, I've grown so much, and I've grown. And I, granted, I have grown. But, like, that, right, that conversation there took me to the next level. Dang. Sidebar. Get you some black female friends in your life. Oh yeah, you need. Hey, you you need some sisters, some sisters in, your in your life. life. You need some sisters in your now life. They're gonna chew you out a new one, but when you sit back and think about it, it's like yo, it was a chew out that you needed. Mm. Like that was part of my me my my growth my my confidence in myself. 
was more so like her shooting me a new one and still at the end of the day, still my friend to this day. Hmm. So looking looking in the future, what so what so what's next for Jovan Palmer? What's what what's what's next, man? You got you got the podcast going with vulnerable moments, mm -hmm. right? No, exclusive. <laughs> vulnerable <laughs> moments uh with, with, with Javon Palmer. Uh-huh. Uh man, what what so what man, what 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 else you working on, man? Cause uh, you, you you out here. You yeah, out here. Yeah, so I want, I'm finishing up school, get my last in social work, become a licensed therapist. That's what's up. Uh, I want to get into coaching. Okay. I'm really I'm ready to get into coaching. I want to build a community of people who have these vulnerable moments who don't know how to have them. I want to make this a, like a culture, man, to where it's like we are comfortable in our skin. We are comfortable who we were. We're comfortable sharing our stories. And I want to build this community of like-minded and not like-minded people mm. who are willing to just sit down and just listen and to hear somebody else out. So um, with the next couple of months, I'm actually working with my friend now. She's helping me build up my back end for my coaching program. and. All this, you know, all the bells and whistles that comes with it, the, you, got you know, you. all that stuff. You, you know all the stuff. You yeah, know, I got you, you. you got it. <laughs> so building that out, man, I want to get into coaching, man, and really get more into speaking and sharing more of my story. That's dope, man. Uh, and, and one thing you're going to be, I mean, you, you already, you're doing it strategically, so I know you, you are aware of what you're doing, but you're going to be very grateful that you, that you got your degree in social work. Yeah, and I almost dropped out twice. Bro, <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> Bro, how, how far are you from finishing? I got like four or five classes left. Oh yeah, bro, so finish that in like January. Bro, finish because I, I I I got kicked out of grad school. That's another story though. <laughs> but um, but yeah, bro, it's because one thing that I've learned about coaching is that yeah, you teach people the technical aspect of whatever it is. They come for one thing, but they leave with something else, mm -hmm. which is the part that I don't think is as advertised as it should be. Uh, because that's not the sexy thing. Yeah. But the people get the help that they need in the area that they want it. But then they, they you, you, you're going you're to change a lot of people's lives, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to change a lot of people's lives, man. So we're going we're gonna to take, take a slight pivot. Okay. Slight pivot. Like, like to have a little bit of fun on the podcast. A little bit of fun. Uh, we got a little rapid fire section. Okay. Right. So this is just a, it's a, it's, it's a this or that. Okay. So, you know, I'd give you two options. You say one or the other. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, Popeyes or Chick Fil A? Popeyes. Really? Yeah. Really? With the bad customer service at all? Yeah. I love my people. Okay. 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 Uh, up north, down south. Because I'm from north, I'm always gonna say up north. Cold weather and all? Except for the cold weather. I just like the, the culture is better. You got Tim's? Yep. Of course Black you do. Black and butters. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Waffles or pancakes? Waffles. Beaches or mountains? Mountains. Ooh. That's a tough one. Ugh. I love a good hike. I love a good beach. I'm going to say the mountains. Work hard, play hard. Play hard. Podcasts or audio books? Podcasts. That's it, man. That's all I got for you. That, oh, this this I, I like I like to throw this in there just to spotlight some other people. Uh, but who would you say is like one, two, a couple, whatever, a few slept on podcasts that more people need to know about? Mine for one. Say good. Living blessed slash vulnerable moments with Jovan J. Palmer. No, vulnerable moments. It's gonna vulnerable, be vulnerable moments. My bad. Vulnerable moments with Jovan J. Palmer is definitely one of them. Um. I like Arielle's podcast, uh, Work and Play podcast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, her transition from from uh, corporate into entrepreneurship. Yours, of course. That's love. Because we're here. <laughs> you and, didn't have to say that just because we're here. No, it's not because we're here, but it's like more so the work that I've been watching you do uh, and the teachings that you do and the knowledge that you have. I feel like you, know, this, you have a wealth of knowledge that people are sleeping on. And when people get wind of it, man, it's over with. I appreciate that. It's over with. I appreciate that, Joe. Uh, who else has a dope podcast? Jamel Jackson, The Value Podcast. Huh. Talks all things relationships, man. He he got into me, man, about this helped me just see things about relationships. Not even just mm, okay. intimate, platonic too. Okay. Um, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. Yeah. 
Man, okay, okay, okay. Sounds good, man. So let, please let the people know how they can find you, follow you, connect with you, yeah, all that. Yeah, for sure. So you can connect me on all social platforms, either Joe Von Palmer or Joe Von J. Palmer. Um, catch the podcast on YouTube and all audio platforms as well. Vulnerable, vulnerable Moments with Joe Von J. Palmer. Um, www.jovonjpalmer.com if you want to sign up to my newsletter. And also, you can also text me, 404-476-6780. That's 404-476-6780. 6780. You can text me. I text you every day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. Uh, you text me the word heal or affirmation or affirmations if you person got to add S to something. And we text you every day, 365, 10 a.m. EST. Man, there it is, y'all. There it is. So I, I want, I definitely want y'all to go check out, check out Jovan's podcast um, because we all have stuff that we hide and we all have areas that we need to heal from, or we're in the process of healing or we've healed and they need to encourage other people, you're in one of those three categories. So definitely tap in with, with Jovan. And y'all already know this is your podcast mentor show with Jonathan Jones, we, where we help you ultimately uh, position your platform so that you can profit on purpose from your podcast. Till next time, peace. God bless. Mm -hmm.